Yeah, then I'd like to talk a little bit about the Bialyshan and the sampling theorem. The in signal processing, the sampling is the reduction of uh, the continuous time signal, so called the analog signal f of t, into discrete signal, the f of t sub n, the, in other words, the digital signal. And definitely the goal is to recover the original signal f of t from the sample values, or sometimes the sample values of several the filtered signals of f of t, the most typically as the, the infinite series, sum of the f of t sub n, and uh, the times the suitable reconstruction functions uh, sn of t. Uh, basically, this is a kind of interpolation problem, so that uh, the, the obviously there should be infinitely many solutions to this problem, unless we restrict the class of the signals in a, in a sense, definitely. And uh, the fundamental question is uh, the, what class of analog signals are the nature such uh, the sampling series expansion. And another thing is uh, the how to take the sample points T sub n and those of reconstruct, reconstruction functions as an objective. Yeah, to motivate the problem a little more, the, I will look at the, just the two extreme examples. For example, the any straight line, then we can recover completely knowing only the two different values at point zero and one, for example. Okay. Another extreme example is uh, the, as you know well, the any entire analytic functions can be recovered completely, knowing only the derivatives of any order only at the point zero. This is a kind of the filtered version of the sampling theory. Right? So this kind of the, the, the uh, extreme examples, right? The two main contributors of the mathematical theory of communication is usually credited to the electrical engineer the Nyquist in, in 1928 in his paper, The Certain Topics in Telegraph Transmission Theory. He showed that uh, to recover the signal completely, the sampling rate must be at least two times of the highest the, the frequency of the signal. So that the minimum rate is now called the Nyquist rate. And another one, the guy is uh, the applied mathematician, the Claude Shannon. When he is working in the Bell Lab, he wrote uh, the fundamental paper on mathematical theory of communications, in which he, he, he introduced the, the, the theory now known the Shannon theorem, or the sometimes it's called the, uh, the, the credits, the three different guys, uh, for example, the earlier than Shannon, already the, the, in the in the end of the 19th century, there is known to the what? Uh, I forgot his the guy's name. What is it? We take her, right? We take her. And the, to the, the Eastern Bloc, to the Russia, is known to the Kotelinikov. Okay. I will be back to that, the fundamental theorem, with the, the, the later. Okay. Yeah, so to introduce the channel theory, let's look at the, the, the basic background. A signal of finite energy. Finite energy means in engineering, it simply means mathematically the functions of which is a square integral. And we call such a signal is band limited if it's Fourier transform or the, the, in the engineering terminology, the frequency spectrum defined in this way has a compact support. Then the by the side of the the Pellerinus theorem, if I collected those, the, the finite energy signals whose spectrum has a compact support in, in a, the, the symmetric compact interval from negative pi omega to pi omega, this collection of functions, they denoted by the PW pi omega and coded as a Pellerinus space. Right? And by the side of the the Pellerinus theorem of characterizing the Fourier transform, the class of these functions is the same as a collection of all those entire analytic functions of exponential type at most pi omega, no matter what this means, of which the, the restriction along the real line belongs to the scaling integral function spaces. So the theory was developed on this space basically. Now let me introduce the celebrated Vitaka Shannon or Kotelinokov's sampling theorem. 
When I was the introducing this one a couple of years ago in New Zealand, somebody the after my talk came up to me and uh, the theorem is basically already known to Corsi. I don't know how much I should believe his story, but anyway, he claimed that. Okay. So any signal in this polygonal space can be reconstructed completely by its uniform sample values the taken at point L of omega as a so-called cardinal series expansion. And so f of t is the sum of f of m of omega times sinc omega t minus n, where the sinc of t is uh, the shortcut for sine pi over t pi over t is called the cardinal sinc function. And here the omega, the one of omega is uh, the sampling period, and this reciprocal omega is the Nyquist sampling rate. The formal definition, you can easily see that any function in pw pi omega is belongs to the pw pi omega tilde whenever omega tilde is greater than omega. So you can replace this sort of number omega by any number which is greater than omega 2. But this is the smallest possible such number for complete the, the recovery of the original signal. Basically, this is a series expanded in L2 sense, so this converges in L2, but also it converges absolutely and also uniformly, the global uniformly over the whole real life. Okay? And the people try to extend this, the, the WSK theorem into the many different the, the directions. For example, the uh, people are trying to extend this, the, the Shannon theory to signals which is band limited not just in L2 sense but in some generalized sense. For example, in distribution sense, okay. there is a such an extension. Okay. Another story is uh, the, the done in late 1970s, the electrical engineer, the populist introduced so-called the, the multi-channel sampling. So here the problem is not to recover the, the signal f in terms of the, the sample values of the, the original signal itself, but some filtered version of the signal. Right? The filtering is happening by so-called the linear time invariant system. Right? So now we have uh, the capital N, linear time invariant systems with frequency responses, capital H of J. They are coming from the L infinity space on the interval from minus pi omega to pi omega. Okay. By the LTI system, what I mean, this is exactly the definition. Okay. The LTI system LJ means that the action of LJ on any signal F is take its Fourier transform, multiply by the frequency response capital HJ, and the, the, the integration means simply the Fourier, the inverse Fourier transform. Right? So in other words, this is uh, the, the F convolution inverse Fourier transform of capital a, HJ. Right? Okay. Now the, the, he considered that the matrix M of C given by H sub J C plus K minus 1 times L, where the number L is a 2 pi omega over M. Okay. Then what he found is if there is a positive constant alpha such that the absolute value determinant of that n by n matrix is away from zero by the alpha almost everywhere on this, this small interval. Then there are n reconstruction functions. By the translation of it, we can recover f of t again for the, the any the signal in belonging to this for the polygonal spaces. Right? As you can see here, the, for each one of the channel signal, the m of omega is a sampling period. It's a reciprocal omega of n is a sampling the, the weight. So for each one of the Lj, we have a uniform sampling weight omega of n. And because we have totally n such channels, so the total sampling weight is omega over n times n, that will be again omega, which is the, exactly the Nyquist sampling weight for any signal in this polygonal spaces. So this is uh, the so-called the, the well-known uh, generalized sampling theory introduced in late 1970s by the electrical engineer, the populist. Oh.
Although the theoretically the, the Shannon sampling theory or the, pop, the populist generalization is quite good, but it has uh, the drawbacks to say uh, the basically the reconstruction function is a translation of sinker functions, and as you can see from the definition of sinker function is a sign of a t, right? So as a t goes infinity, it behaves like one over t, and that means that it slow decays to zero as t tends to z the infinity, but it decays very slowly, and that means in the practical sense that is a kind of the, the quite a serious drawback. Right? So, and another the handicap is for the Shannon theory is uh, to apply the Shannon theory or its generalization to uh, the similar kind of generalization. The signal must be better limited, but there are many signals, right? serious signals, which is not band limited because it is time limited. Right? So, if the signal is time limited, then it cannot be band limited by the famous Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Right? So, the original function and the superior transform, not both of them can have the compact support. Right? If one of them has a compact support, then the other part should have an infinite support. Right? So, that is a quite a serious drawback, so that people want to extend the channel theory out of the signals which is band limited. Right? So they need the concept of the shifting variant subspace of the L2 of R. Right? To motivate the shifting variant space, let's look at the, the channel theory again the, from a little bit different viewpoint than by the Kluge-Shannel theorem. One of the two pi, the Fourier transform is uh, the unitary map from PW pi to the, the L2 negative pi and the pi, so that PW pi is the closest of space of L2R, okay? of which the sink T minus N. Okay? Note that this is the integer translation of single function sink of T, right? This is uh, also normal basis of PW pi. In fact, in fact, this you can obtain as the inverse Fourier transform of exponential negative i n of c, the well-known orthonormal basis of L2 negative pi and pi. So now we can recognize the PW pi as a collection of all those L2 functions whose the Fourier transform has support in this interval. But again, through this observation, it's the same as the closed linear span of inter translation of single function sin curve t, where this family is uh, uh, the also normal basis of this polynomial spaces. And that means that you can write the same space as the uh, sum of the c sub n, c of n times sin t minus n, where the c is moving over the all the square sum of the sequences. So the, the, now the point is this one, right? recognizing these polynomial spaces as a collection of this family. Okay? So this is, uh, the, in, in, this, in this sense, polynomial space is a prototype of a shifting variant space generated by the single function sin curve t. Okay? By the shifting variance, I mean shifting variant under any integer translation. In other words, if any function belongs to pw pi, then any of these integer translation is again belong to the same spaces. So for any L2 functions, let's define the V of P is the closed span of the only integer translation of the V of T minus N. And we call such a space as a shifting variant space generated by this single function V of T. If P of T is a sink of T, then, as I said before, the, the, we are returning to the parallel space. Right? In general, now the, the, this collection, into translation of the single function, is called also normal basis of V of P. As we know where, okay? we have this identity, right? Collection theorem. The norm of sum of C and P T minus N, the norm of this the vector squared, that is the same as the, the C squared for any the, the square sum of the C squared C n. So, and the other possibility is we call the, the family phi sub t minus n is a which basis of V of phi, 
Mitsubishi in fact is nothing but the isomorphic energy of orthogonal basis of ERP. Another characterization of the Mitsubishi is okay, dome of this factor is essentially the same of the norm of C. It's bounded below by the positive number times norm of C squared and bounded above by another constant times norm of C squared. If you have equality with the constant, the AB is equal to 1, then there's an orthonormal basis. Right? So this is a little bit variant of the well-known orthonormal basis in any Hilbert spaces. Another very useful concept is, is the frame of V of P referring by the B and A if it satisfies this type of the inequality. The right hand side of inequality is rather familiar to you, it's known as the vessel inequality for the, the any orthonormal family. Okay. And the left hand inequality means the family phi t minus n is complete in the space of real P. Okay. Then as I defined, okay. when phi of t minus n is an orthonormal basis or a rich basis, or the frame of VLP, then I call this the, the single function P of T as a orthonormal generator, or the rich generator, or frame generator of the shift invariance of VLP. Then we can see immediately the P sub T minus N is an orthonormal basis of VLP, implied this is the rich basis of VLP, implied as a frame of VLP, and uh, the, as you can guess, not conversely in general. Right? Even though the, the frame is not a basis, but it has a quite a good property like the, the basis, right? if something is a frame, then we have a so-called the concept of dual frame, by which we can expand any member of that Hilbert spaces into that part of the series expanded. This is the so-called the frame expansion. And the frame did not be a basis. So in other words, the members of frame may not be linearly independent. In other words, that means there might be some redundancy in frame. And the redundancy included in frame is not a demerit, but in fact this is a merit. Okay. We can use the redundancy the included in a frame in a very clever way, for example, to recover any of the missing samples or, and so on. Right? So this is a good thing to have, right? So from now on, we always assume that we have uh, L2 functions, which is uh, the, the only, the well-defined almost everywhere, but to avoid the, the ambiguity, I'm assuming that P of T is L2 functions, which is everywhere well defined, which generator, and assuming one more thing, the quantity C P of T, this is bounded for each, the, the, each T in R. In other words, the sequence of P T plus N is a scale summable for arbitrary real number T. Then, the shift invariant space V of P, generated by P of T, in other words, this is a collection of all such discrete continuous convolution product. We see is moving over the L2 spaces. We need one more concept concerning to this one. For such a generator PT, I will call this expression. In other words, this is a, a Discrete Fourier transform of this, the L2 sequence P of T plus N. Let's denote it by the GPTC and call it by the Jack transform of P of T. Then, because I'm assuming this sequence, this is a little L2, so the Jack transform as a function of C, this is L2 functions over the interval from 0 to 2 pi. And for any measurable functions f of T over the real line, I'm using those two notations f of 0 norm is essential interim of f of the function f and f infinity is essential supremum of f. Then first, the regular shifted sampling 
in a such shape the shifting vector spaces okay, for any sigma between 0 and 1 the following statements are all equivalent first the, as we expect or as we hope there is a which basis which is uh, trust, again a translation of single function S of t of V of P such that we can expand any signal f belonging to this shifting variant of spaces as a kind of shifted sampling expansion. Right? So we now take a sample values of f, not at the integer points, but the uniform shifting of the, the, the points, the integer points. Right? It's the same as there is the rich basis, which might the reconstruction function might depends on the index n by which we have a similar kind of sampling series expansion. Another the check of a condition is it's also equivalent to using the jack transform. The jack transform of the function computed as sigma is essentially bounded away from zero and essentially bounded about by a finite number. It's also equivalent to so-called sampling inequality. In other words, there is a two positive constant satisfying this inequality. Okay. Moreover, if any one of those four equivalent conditions are satisfied, then the reconstruction functions in the in the condition B, it must be a translation of single function S of T. And the functions as a so-called interpolatory property saying that S of sigma plus n must be a chronic delta. How to construct such a reconstruct function is now easy because the Fourier transform of S is given by Fourier transform of the original generator divided by the jack transform of P computed as sigma. So this is the, the, the kind of the, not exactly the first, but it, anyway, this is a significant result to the, the outside of, which is applicable to the signals, which it might not be the band limited way, depending on the generator. For the convergence mode, the sampling series definitely converges in L2 sense, and also absolutely on R, so that uh, pointwise evaluation is always making sense. Moreover, it converges uniformly on any subset of R, over the function C of T is bounded. Okay. Unless this is globally bounded, we cannot expect the global uniform convergence. Now I'm getting into the, the, the main topic of this talk, a symmetric multi-channel sampling. Okay. The, the, you might the, the, uh, recall that the, uh, the, in the theorem, for the sampling theorem for the shifting variant of spaces, uh, I do not introduce any filtering, and uh, the sampling weight is taken at the point of sigma plus n, so it's a uniform sampling, so sampling weight is always one. Right? The number one is the likest sampling weight for the shifting variant of spaces. So, the, for some reality, I'd like to introduce some the multi uh, channeling, multi filtering system, and I'd like to introduce the osmetry in sampling weight. Okay? So, Let's introduce the, let's say, the capital M, LTI systems with suitable impulse responses, little lj, and that means the, the capital LJ, the action of capital LJ on F is simply the convolution product of F and the L of J. And the goal is now, recover any signal F of T in this shifting variant space B of P as the multi-series expansion, well, as you can see, okay. summation for j is equal to 1 through n and the summation over the over all integers, okay. lj of f is j's channel the signal. I'm taking the samples from the j's channel the signal at point of sigma j plus rj of n. And then this, this is a shifting, and rj is really the sampling period. 
So one of our J is uh, uh, something rate for J split to the signal. Right? And because I am not requiring those RJs are all the same, so by the reason I am calling it as asymmetric. So when each RJ is a positive integer, but not necessarily the same thing, and the, the shifting happening is between 0 and R of J, and the, the unknown reconstruction functions depending on the index J and the N, right? So I'm required, I'm hoping that this, the sampling series is expanded, okay? With the, the reconstruction functions as a frame, or possible which basis of the, the, the shift invariant space of V of P. The basic idea of the, doing this one is that using the so-called Fourier reality. Okay, so let's consider the isomorphism tau from the L2 0 2 pi to the shift invariant V of P defined in this way. Okay. The action of J on capital F belonging in this space is, is this is just uh, the, the Fourier series of spans of coefficient. Then instead of the exponential negative i and c, I'm the putting the p of t minus n. Okay. And it's easy to see that this mapping tau is an isomorphism from l to 0 2 pi to v of p. Okay. Then using this isomorphism tau, the required sampling series is dependent on the space of v of p. We can transform it to the same problem on the space l to spaces. Right? So using this the mapping power, this required the sampling series is equivalent to series expansion for any function in L2 spaces in this form. One drawback in second line is function to be expanded is f of c, but the, the samples we are using, they are using the still little level f. Right? So we cannot work with this form itself. So we need to modify it so that we present at least those numbers, not in terms of small f, but in terms of capital F. That should be the first thing we should do. So let's analyze what are the those sampling values. Lj of f computed as sigma j plus rjn. This is, in fact, uh, the inner product in this space is of capital F of C and 1 over 2 pi conjugate of Jack transform times exponential negative IRJN of C. So using this, okay, we can rely the, the second equation. Now we would like to expand any function F of C in L2 spaces in this fashion, okay. using this identity. Okay. So we would like to expand it in terms of double summation in the product type of C and some members from these spaces and some unknown reconstruction functions. Now we have uh, the, the function to be expanded and the, the coefficients is it also expressed in terms of this function right, right now, right? So we are in a rather the better situation. Now the problem is we need the such an expanded in these spaces so Naturally, we are going to ask when the family of functions down there, okay? when is this family forms a frame or which basis of L to 0 to pi. Okay? For simplicity, I will call this head part of this expression as just a gj of c. Okay? Then noting that, the one immediate trouble in recognizing this family as uh, the frame or the rich basis of L2, the immediate trouble is this power is uh, the, the different, uh, it's changing. Ij is an integer but depending on j. Okay. So to match things up, I will be regrouping the, 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 the integers, all the integers as a mod of the R, where the i is equal to least common multiple of those i j is so this group is the same as g j m j of c 
exponential negative i r n of c where j is moving one to the n. <coughs> Little m j is moving from one to the other by j and then it's moving over the integer, right? This is just uh, the, the divided the whole set of integers into uh, the, the, the uh, subgroups of the mod, the mod r, right? And the defined unitary map from L to 0 to pi into the alpha power of L to 0 to pi over R. Okay. This is a very simple thing. Just cut any function defined on this interval. Okay. Divide this interval into R equal length subintervals. Okay. And for each restricted function, F, then make a left translation. Okay. So, Starting from f of c, the very first one, keep it. The next one, okay, translate it to the left by 2 pi over r, and so on. Okay. So that the form of vector, okay. form of the, the, the column vectors of size r, okay. then we are going to get the function in l to 0, 2 pi over r to the power r. Okay. And simply using the, by using simple definition, this is a trivial the unitary operator. Okay. Using this, now the, the, let's introduce a little bit the large the, the matrix, right? Okay. Apply those D, the unitary operator D, to each one of the members of G's, right? So we have a rather big size, okay. this much big, matrix on the smaller interval from 0 to the 2 pi over R. And make uh, the, this adjoint and time this set so that we have uh, positive semi definite matrices so that all of these eigenvalues are at least the, the, the non negative real numbers. Right. Let's call it the lambda capital M as the largest possible eigenvalue, lambda sub M is the smallest possible eigenvalue, and the beta of G is uh, the the essential supremum of largest eigenvalue of the value of this matrix is by the same token the, the alpha of G is uh, uh, essential infimum of the smallest eigenvalue of this matrix is. Okay. Then I claim okay, this family of functions, right? This is uh, frame over L to 0 to pi, if and only if we have uh, uh, the smallest eigenvalue is essentially bounded below, bounded away from 0 to below, and uh, the largest eigenvalue is bounded away from infinity. Okay. And if I'm requiring the little bit stronger condition, say this is a rich basis, then basically it should be the frame first and the sum of those integers, reciprocal of integers, that is equal to 1. This is not a coincidence, but in fact, the, the, if you can be reminded, the 1 over rj is a sampling rate for j's filtered signal. So some of those numbers is, this is in a sense, total sampling rate. And when the total sampling rate is equal to 1, 1 is the number which is exactly the nicest sampling rate. Right? So, in the ideal case, we are getting the rich basis. Right? Now then, the, the, we are almost ready to introduce to the main theorem. Okay. So going back to the formula, okay. for any function, the L2 functions down there, we would like to expand it in this fashion, okay. recognize this sampling value in terms of capital F in this way, this is just uh, the shortcut notation for the same functions, right? Then I match up those power rj by dividing the, the set of whole integers into the, the, the mod set of the set of integers mod r, right? So I'm changing the notation, the, this expression into that type, right? Now the lemma shows that when do we expect this is a frame or a rich basis, right? We have uh, the complete characterization now. So, now we can state the theorem, say, assume that uh, the largest eigenvalue is essentially bounded above the, the bounded above by a finite number, okay? 
And uh, in fact, this condition means that since the spectral norm of a matrix is the same as the four-minus norm of the, the, the any matrices, so this condition is the same as all of the members in the, the, the in the matrix are essentially bound to the function. So assuming this, then all of the following conditions are equivalent. There is a frame which will play the role of the reconstruction functions by which you can expand any member, any sigma in B or P into this required asymmetric multi-channel sampling expansion. And uh, it's equivalent to there is a frame. There is a reconstruct function depending on both the indices, J and N. Now the, the, you can expand it out. Okay. The regrouping it, then some of them are just the translation of the basic functions right, in this way. Okay. So that we have a similar type of the Fourier series expansion. Okay. And the checkable condition there is is uh, smallest eigenvalue is bounded away from zero. Okay. All those things are the, the, the equivalent. If we require a little more, for example, if you want the rich basis expansion then, okay. there is a rich basis of the similar type as before by which we expand the any signal F in B or P in this fashion, right? If and don't need, okay. this is a frame condition, and this is uh, the, the lightest weight condition that the total sampling weight must be exactly equal to the, the allowed the lightest sampling weight. Finally, the, I'll give you the two simple the illustrating examples. If I'm taking the generator to be the sink of T, then the briefly becomes uh, the, the parallel spaces. I'm taking two LTI systems. One is identity, right? The frequency response is one means that the L1 of T is a direct return, so okay, no action at all. Second frequency response, I'm taking the negative I sine of C, and that means action of the second one, this is the so-called the Hilbert transform of F, that I denote the F tilde. No shifting, and the uniform sample, symmetric sampling rate, R1 and the RT is equal to 1. Then you can check that in this situation, the, all the conditions are satisfied, so we have uh, uh, kind of the uh, multi-channel sampling, a symmetric sampling rate. What? Should it be? Should it be? Thank you. Same here. Right? Which converges not only in the L2 sense, not only in this space, but converges absolutely and the global uniformly on R. As a second example, in which I'm the, taking the asymmetric sampling rate, so I'm taking the generator to be the B spline of degree 1, so piecewise is polynomial of degree 1, and no shifting for simplicity, and the asymmetric sampling for the first one is 1, second one is 1 half. And taking the, the, the impulse response for the first one is a characteristic function of this interval, and second one is a characteristic function of that interval. Okay. Then the, now we have a frame expansion okay. holding on this B prime, the shifting variant of spaces, right? Where the sampling rate is different, right? For the first one and the second one. Okay. And which converges not only in L2 sense again, but absolutely and uniformly over the whole real life. These two are just a simple example showing that the, the, the illustrating the main theorems are introduced. Actually, I have uh, five more minutes or four more minutes. Thank you very much for your attention. Do I know, Jeff?